Geneviève Bergeron, 21. Hélène Colgan, 23. Nathalie Croteau, 23. Barbara Daigneau, 22. Anne-Marie Edouard, 21. Maud Avernik, 29. Barbara Maria Kosnik, 21. Marise Lagagnère, 25. Marise Leclerc, 23. Anne-Marie Levé, 27. Sonia Petit, 23. December 6 is a dark building that haunts me. A number I can't erase from my memory. With every year that passes, it's still a difficult day, a painful reminder. It's hard to know what to say that hasn't already been said. About 14 women murdered. 14 women dead. 14 women murdered. 14 women dead. And it was three years after December 6, 1989, when I laid eyes for the very first time on l'école polytechnique. I was in my first year of university. It was frosh week. And my bus drove by the University of Montreal. I suddenly noticed the sign. And my skin began to crawl. As if suddenly fear had a location, even though I knew that was just an illusion. Because what happened that day and that one man's rage is not limited to one location or a particular page in a history book. It is not a news item locked back in time. It's a wall to be scaled. It serves to remind us of what it still means to be a woman in this world, where things may appear equal. But sisters, don't be fooled. Because somehow things just don't quite seem to be evening out. Somehow, as a gender, it looks like we're still down and out. You can read the statistics for yourself. Hundreds of women dying at the hands of their boyfriend or spouse each year. Women's bodies farmed out, used up, disappeared. Meanwhile, waves of feminism have come crashing into shore. And you'd think by now we wouldn't be fighting anymore. But on December 6, 1989, there was an F-word standoff. The men were ordered outside. 14 women gave their lives. They hadn't signed up to be soldiers. They weren't trying to take sides. They just wanted to be engineers. And I know violence can be random. And no life can be made safe. No matter how much national defense you muster or how much money you make. But among the world's poor, women are on the lowest rung. Our work still undervalued, underpaid, and never done. Across the world, our wages still reflecting less respect. Earning a modest fraction of every male dollar. Economically, we're still the weaker sex. And you'll look around the world at the leaders of state. You'll notice only 15% of politicians are female, and you'll think you made a mistake because you were under the impression that things were equal now. Hasn't it been almost 100 years since women became persons and got the vote in this nation? But look around the world and you'll find anti-abortion legislation. You'll find genital mutilation. 135 million girls and women who've undergone this violation. Exploding rates of female HIV infection and governments trying to stop overpopulation, making laws which encourage female infanticide. Don't tell me that man was just a madman, because this violence is still coming from the inside of our world. It is sanctioned. It continues. Our work is not done. And there is still not enough control over who can buy a gun. Look around. You find five little girls shot at nickel mines, and the five who survived forever changed, left behind. Three women shot in their salsa class near Pittsburgh, USA. Six girls taken hostage, then sexually assaulted in their Colorado high school. One shot in the head. Eight girls and a female teacher dead in Winnenden, Germany. A litany, the spoils of misogyny. Recent history still littered with female bodies. And what could be more bitter than the irony of a killer searching for a moment of meaning or glory in a desperate attempt to add himself into the story of a world that tells us we're all equal now. 
But somehow, equal doesn't feel equal yet. To him, equal feels like some kind of threat. He makes headlines to secure himself a place in history, his lethal rage treated like some kind of mystery. Another isolated case, rather than a symptom of a society drowning in its inability to really share power. And a media that venerates and glorifies fame then obsesses about the psychology of the killer's brain studying the effects of too many video games or his childhood pain. Giving prime time once again, not to the victims, but to the perpetrator. Meanwhile, the government shuts down another shelter because women shouldn't need protection anymore. After all, look how far we've come. But our work is still not done. Sure, we have made gains, but we gather here every December 6th to commemorate every fallen woman's name. Each year, we gather to remember and to work for change. 14 reasons to remember, 14 reasons to mourn, 14 reasons to be strong and proud. You were born a woman. Sonia. One, you are smart. Michel. Two, you are tough. Annie. Three, you can organize. Four, you are enough. Annie. Five, you can listen. Anna. Six, you are loud. Anna. Seven, you can build a world where women are allowed to be unafraid of who they are and what they do. Eight, your sense of humor will carry you through. Nine, you can learn whatever you set your mind to. Ten, your confidence is what makes you look great. Eleven, you're beautiful at every age, at any weight. Twelve, your capacity to love is infinite. Nine. Thirteen, you know how to cry. Nine. Fourteen, you don't need a list to tell you why. So many reasons to remember. So many reasons to mourn. There are so many reasons to be strong and Change is possible and hope is abundant.